Good morning, Facebook family and the Rescue family. My name is Pastor Donald. I am pastor of the Rescue in Pillion, South Carolina. We are so glad that you have joined us on Facebook Live. Let me explain what the Rescue Church is going to be doing during the circumstances surrounding the coronavirus and the governor's mandate uh, for public meetings. Our Sunday morning services are canceled through the end of March. We will be doing an online experience only for our worship service. So if you would uh, go to our Facebook page to catch those, we will be constantly updating the information on there and letting you know when our services will be and our small group Bible studies, whether uh, we're gonna be able to put those online or not, all that information will be there. If there's any changes, please, please, please continue to check that and we will keep it updated for you. Um, uh, the church is supposed to be outside. I saw a t-shirt uh, the other day that actually said uh, that the church has left the building and this has actually forced us to leave the building and we are to be the church and not just go to church. So that's what we are doing. So please, if you would comment on Facebook Live and uh, we want to connect with you, uh, let us know where you're watching from and uh, we want to get with you and comment back. So let us pray and then we're gonna go into a time of worship. Lord. Thank you for this opportunity to worship together. May your presence fill every home that is watching on Facebook Live. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And Lord, we look to you in times of trouble because we know that you will deliver us. Now who's ready to worship the Lord? Sing with us, please. Darkness fades It's a new beginnings As we lift our eyes to a hope beyond Well, creation awaits With an expectation To declare the reign of the Lord our God We will not be moved When the earth gives away For the reign For every fear, there's an empty grave For the reason why this overcome Now the silence breaks In the name of Jesus As the heavens cry, let the earth respond all creation shouts with the voice of triumph to declare the reign of the Lord our God. We will not be moved when the earth gives away for the reason why it is overcome. If for every fear there's an empty grave for the reason
Good morning again. There are a few announcements I want to make you aware of. Our women's ministry trip to the Billy Graham Library has been canceled. Uh, please see Ms. Heather Swaggart for more information and for the rescheduled date that she will be rescheduling that with. And then also I'm very sad to announce that we have to cancel our Easter production on April the 12th, which is Easter Sunday. Uh, no, the resurrection has not been canceled, but our Easter production has been canceled because we don't have access to the facility. And then also please check our Facebook page for updates as we go along and uh, we get updated information about the coronavirus. We'll be putting it on there along with information about our small groups and our Our Kids ministry. Uh, if you are in need or you know someone else that is in need, please contact us and let us know because we want to assist you in any way that we can, but we have to know that you are in need. Lastly, if you know someone that doesn't have Facebook or doesn't have internet connection at their house, please keep them informed about what the Rescue Church is doing. Uh, or you can invite them over to your house and watch Facebook Live for the service on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock with them. Now let's continue to worship.
Today we're going to start uh, week one of the journey to the cross. We are getting up to Easter. We've got about four weeks away from Easter, and we're going to start our one of four week journey to Easter, and we're going to talk about the ministry of Christ today. And I'm going to read Luke because it's very important of what the, the ministry of Christ is because he knew exactly what he came here to do, and he even states that here. Let me, let me read it because he reads this from the scrolls. And I want to read it to you. Luke 4, verse 18 through 20. The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. He then rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, sat down, and the eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fixed on him. Jesus is quoting an Old Testament passage out of Isaiah that basically says the same thing. And when he gets through, he hands it back to the attendant, he sits down, and that was a custom back then because the teacher always stood to read the text. And he's, he's in honor of the text, and he's throwing respect for the text. But when they read it, they sit down to teach it. And that's why it says all the eyes were on him when he sat down. Uh, so he didn't come to do away with the religious system. He comes so that the religious system could be fulfilled on there. Uh, so the, the Old Testament is filled with mysteries. But the New Testament is filled with revelation of the mysteries of the Old Testament. And that's exactly what he came here to do, was unfold the mysteries of the Old Testament for us. And it's awesome to know that we have a God that has, has everything in mind, that he has every detail worked out, down to the very scriptures that Jesus was read the day he entered the temple to read. And it was the very thing that he had sent him here to do, was he was sent here 
so that we could be saved. And he read it and he said, sat down and said, now this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Jesus knew his purpose. Many of us today don't know our purpose. We struggle on our purpose. It took me years to find out what my purpose was because I just kept running or I kept denying it or I kept doubting that God was calling me to do something. But Jesus knew exactly what his purpose was and he came here, he fulfilled it. Uh, John 21 verse 25 says this, And there are also many other things that Jesus did, which if they were written one by one, I suppose not even the world itself could contain the books that were written in them. So what we have in our Bible is just a portion of what Jesus did when he was here on this earth. He done so many miracles and so many wonders that not even all the books in the world could contain what Jesus did when he walked the earth. And, then it, and he only had three and a half years ministry. Just think, what if he'd had a life, what if he'd had 40 years, 20 years, 10 years? Just think how many wonderful works he could have done while he was here. Journey to the cross. And this is what Jesus told his disciples. He said, if you want to follow me, take up your cross and follow me. So we all have a cross that we have to bear. We have to take up that cross and we have to follow. We have a journey that we have to take to get to it. And so we're going to talk about the journey of Christ and we're going to look at his ministry here. Uh, I want to take you to John 2 and I'm going to read you a passage out of there. And uh, uh, if you could, go ahead and comment and tell me if you remember what Jesus' first miracle was. Comment in there. Let us know that you're listening. Tell us where you're at. Uh, we want to get some interaction with you. But what was the first miracle that Jesus did? That's right. It was, it was turning water into wine. We're going to read that passage in John 2. On the third day, a wedding took place. Now, I find this very interesting that the text starts out on the third day. Because when I read that on the third day, it hit me that Jesus was raised on the third day. Day. So when you see threes, you've got to pay attention to those threes in Scripture because that's very important. You've got the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We, we are Trinity ourselves. we got a body, we got a soul, and we got a spirit. So it's very important for us to, to, to be aware of the threes that are in Scripture. On the third day, a wedding took place at Canaan and Galilee. And Jesus' mother was there. And Jesus and his disciples had been invited to the wedding. Now, probably this was some of Mary's family is the reason that Jesus and his disciples was there, is the reason that Mary was there. And if she, it wasn't her family, it was she was the wedding director, as we would call it. And so that's why they're there. And this is what she said. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, they have no more wine. And this is Jesus' reply. Jesus replied, woman... And I want to stop here because this is not a derogatory comment from Jesus toward his mother. Uh, back in the Greek language, when they said woman, it was a term of endearment, of respect, of honor of who was speaking. And so he said, woman, why do you involve me? My hour has not yet come. And I find it very interesting that the very next thing that Mary says as Mary looks at the servants, and this is what she says. She said, do whatever he tells you to do. Mary did not acknowledge that Jesus said, it's not my time. Because obviously Mary must have known something. Because in the day when this took place, the Jewish customs and the wedding, sometimes the feast would last for a week. And during that week, if they run out of anything, this was, a, this was an embarrassment to the family. And she didn't want the family to be embarrassed, even whether she was part of the family or the wedding director, she knew the embarrassment that it would bring on the family. So when the wine run out, she went to Jesus and she goes, hey, Jesus, you know, um, they run out of wine. We don't want no embarrassment here, so uh, can you help us out here a little bit? But Jesus is going, why are, you, why are you involving me in this? It's not my time yet. And she didn't even acknowledge he said that because she turned to the servants and she said, whatever he does, whatever he tells you to do, that's what you need to do. And so let's read on. It says, Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used for the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, Fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, Now draw some out, take it to the master of the banquet. 
They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, Everyone brings out the choice wines first, and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best for last, or the best till now. What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory and his disciples believed him. It's very interesting. And there's three things we're going to learn out of this scripture. And before I get to them, but I think it's very interesting that it was three days. On the third day, the wedding took place. And when, you, and when you go and you start doing the research and you're talking about the third day of the wedding taking place, uh, Jesus was baptized in the river of Jordan. It was a three days journey from where he was baptized until where the wedding was held in Cana and Galilee. And so that's why it's talking about the third day here. But remember, I told you, you have to be aware of the threes when you see them in scripture because they're very important when you see them there. So it took them three days to get there. And it's also very interesting to me that, that Mary said, Jesus, you know, we need some help here. I expect you to help. And he goes, well, it's not my time yet. And then she uh, instructs the servants to go ahead and do what he tells them to do. I just find it very interesting here. Uh, to keep the family from having embarrassment, this is what she wanted done. She said, Jesus, you got to help us out here. This family's going to be embarrassed. We can't have that. We want something to be done. So I want to look at three things in this text that we can learn from here. The first thing that we can learn is God can use others to instruct us. God can use others to instruct us. How many times in your life have you had people to come up to you and give you instructions that you did not think was for your ministry or for you at that time? This is exactly what Jesus was talking about. Mary, our mom, our mother, he called her woman, but that would be like us going, Mom, why are you asking me this? It, you, know, you know, it's not my time. And she's going, hey, you know what? Servants, do whatever he says do. And that's what you're going to have to do. And so it, it, it's very interesting because others can instruct us in our ministry and others can instruct us in our timing. I run for years because I didn't think it was the timing. I kept going, oh, God, I can't do this. No, that's not. it's not the right time, Lord. It's not the right time. you got to get somebody else to do that. But if we listen to the others that God has sent us and follow the instructions that they have given us, our ministry will flourish, the timing will come in. And then the second thing is we got to listen for those instructions because sometimes we're not listening. Anybody other than me hard of hearing? Or anybody have selective hearing, as my wife says? I know I do. Sometimes I just don't hear what somebody has said because I'm not truly listening to them. I may be looking at them, but I'm not engaged in what they're saying. And so we miss the instructions that God gave to somebody to give to us. And we miss what God wants to do through us. And we miss what God wants to do in us. And we miss the blessing because we weren't following the instructions that the Lord had given us. And then the third thing here out of this passage I want us to see is when we obey, it opens doors for the miracles to flow. Wow. It opens doors for the miracles to flow. Because this is what Jesus did. Jesus was obedient to his mother. Do you know that in the Old Testament it says that this is the only promise that will lengthen your days? That if you honor your father and mother? So to hear Jesus going, well, it's not yet my time. But yet he did what his mother wanted him to do anyhow because he was, he was following the instructions of the authority figure that was over him. Even though he was son of God, he was also son of man, and he followed the instructions that was given to him. So when we start being obedient to the instructions, it opens the doors for miracles to flow. Now, if you, if you remember in the text, it said the water was put in water pots it filled about 30 to 40 gallons up but those water pots was used for the ceremonial cleansing that means they washed their hands they washed their feet they washed their face so these water pots was not used for the cleanness of the water and the servants knew that 
So it would have been hard for me to follow those instructions because I'd have been like, Jesus, um, those water pots there, are, are those are ceremonial washing pots. We're not supposed to use those to be drinking uh, water out of those. So I'd have been real hesitant to draw out of that and take it to the wedding master or to the uh, to the wedding director, so to speak, and take it to them and let them taste it because I know there's water in there and that's a container used for ceremonial cleansing. And I'd be like, oh man, I don't know about this. I'm gonna I'm gonna get I'm gonna get in trouble. And if you're like me, sometimes I gotta I, I gotta know every little detail before I want to walk in obedience. But they didn't. Jesus said, fill the pot. They filled the pot. Jesus said, draw it out. They drew it out. And Jesus said, take it to the wedding master. They took it to the wedding master. And when the wedding master tasted it, it was the best wine that had been served the whole time. Not only does being obedient open the door for the miracles to flow, but being obedient is going to open the door for the best that God has for your life to flow. And that's what I want. I don't know about you, but that's what I want. I want miracles to flow in my life. I want miracles to flow. Uh, when, I, when I walk down the street, I want, I want to be able to pray for somebody, and I want them to be healed, and I want them to be recovered. When I go to the hospital, which we're restricted now, we can't go to the hospital during this time and, and, and this crisis, uh, but we're going to get back to that. And, 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 I, and I want to walk down those halls, and I want to pray for people. and I want them to be healed. I want the miracles to flow. But i got to walk in obedience for that to happen. Am I alone? Come in and let me know I'm not the only one that has gotten instructions and not followed those. Because sometimes we try to make up for it when we miss it and it don't work because we miss the timing of the obedience. You see, it's not just about being obedient, but you got to be obedient in the right timing as well. And so, so those are three things. I want to recap those three things. God can use others to instruct us, just like he did uh, with Mary instructing Jesus. And then Jesus instructing the servants. You got to listen for the instructions. And then you got, and when we obey it, it opens the doors for miracles to flow. And that, that is some awesome learning that we have to grab hold to in these scriptures because we all got to be obedient. Let's look at another passage. Luke 17, verse 11. Uh, this is the 10 lepers. Uh, if, if you remember this story, go ahead and comment right now. How many lepers came back and praised God for being healed? If you know that answer, go ahead and go ahead and tell me before I read the scripture. Go ahead and comment and let me know you know what the answer is. Luke 17, verse 11. Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers who stood afar off. They lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourselves to the priest. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice he glorified God and fell down on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. And this man was a Samaritan, the scripture tells us. So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this Samaritan? And he said to the Samaritan, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. If you remember from other teachings in scripture, Samaritans was not a liked people. The Jews and the Samaritans were always fighting. They didn't like each other. If they walked down the, the road, uh, they would go on the other side of the road. One would be on one side, one on the other. So they would pass. They wouldn't even come close to each other. It was just a lot of friction between the Jews and the Samaritans. And so here, it's very interesting that the Samaritan is the one that came back and fell at Jesus' feet and gave him glory. 
We, we, we are Gentiles. We were like the Samaritan. We were not the Jewish race that is God's chosen people. We are the Gentiles. We are adopted into the family of God. So I don't know about you, but I want to be the one that when a miracle happens in my life, that I'm the one that's coming back with a loud voice and praising God and saying, thank you, God, for healing my body. Thank you, Father, for taking care of my financial situation. Thank you, Lord for putting my marriage back together. Thank you, God, that you took care of my rebellious children. Thank you, Lord, that you had me to stop at that red light instead of going through. I want to be the one that comes back and rejoices at Jesus' feet because I recognize that a miracle had took place. You see, there was 10 that day that were cleansed and only one of them returned. And Jesus is asking this one, he's going, hey, where is the other nine? Why did they not come back? Why did they not fall at my feet? Why did they not praise me for the miracle that they received in their body? Right now, where are you at? You're probably thinking of some miracles that God done in your life. Did you praise him for it? Did you acknowledge what he did for you? If you have not, I want you to give him praise right now for the miracles that he's done in your life. There's some of you that he's healed. There's some of you that he's provided for financially. There's some of you that he's got out of situations that you should have never got yourself in. There's all kind of things that he's done for us. We need to come and fall at his feet and begin to praise him for those things that he has done for us. Let's acknowledge that he is king of kings. Let's acknowledge that he is Lord of lords. Let's acknowledge that he is our Savior. Hallelujah! Man, I get excited. But these guys, they lifted all ten of them at the same time when they saw Jesus coming. The scripture says all ten of them at the same time raised their voice and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. We're in a time where we need to be screaming, Jesus, Master, have mercy on our nation. Get rid of this coronavirus. Protect us, God, from the things the enemy has brought on us. We need to be screaming that out. And this is what that says to me. They were yelling because they were desperate. You see, they were lepers. They were outcasts. They couldn't come close to people. They couldn't, get con they couldn't get connected with anybody. They were the outcast of the society because they were sick. They had sores on them. They had to holler, unclean, unclean, when anybody started approaching them. They had to let everybody know that they were lepers. So they were in a desperate situation. There's somebody this morning that is watching, and you're in a desperate situation. You need to start screaming out to Jesus right now and say, Jesus, have mercy on me and watch what happens in your life when you begin to call on the name of Jesus. And as they screamed out to him, Jesus didn't look at them and said, be healed. He didn't go over there and touch them and lay his hand on them. He didn't, he didn't soak them down at all like we do when we lay hands on people. He just simply said, go, show yourself to the priest. And while they were going, I don't know about you, but if that had been me, I would have looked at Jesus and go, what? Uh, I got fingers falling off. My ears done fell off. And you ain't going to come over here and lay your hand on me? You're not, you're not going you're not going to lay your hand on me and pray a prayer over me and tell me to be healed? You just telling me to go show myself to the priest? What kind of healing is that? That's probably what I'd have been doing. I don't know what you'd have been doing, but that's probably what I would have done. But the scripture says they didn't. He said, go show yourself to the priest. And the reason he said that, because in that day, there were religious uh, a law that they had set up. If you, had, if you were a leper before you could be pronounced clean, you had to go show yourself to the priest and they had to inspect you and make sure they had to quarantine you for seven days and then they had to inspect you again to make sure that you were totally clean of the leprosy before you could start being around people again. 
So Jesus just simply said, go show yourself to the priest. You see, he didn't come to do away with the law. He came to fulfill the law. And so it's very interesting that we see that those ten lepers, when they got the instructions from Jesus, they started going to show themselves to the priest. And the Bible says when they started going or while they were going to show themselves to the priest, that's when the miracle took place in their body. That's when their leprosy was healed. It was in the middle of being obedient to the instructions that Jesus gave. I don't know about you, but that speaks volumes to me. In the middle of being obedient to the instructions that Jesus gave. Again, it opens the door for the miracles to flow in our lives when we start following the instructions that have been given to us. Are you in a desperate situation? If you are, you need to cry out to Jesus. And he may send somebody to you to give you instructions to follow. And you don't need to say, well, Jesus didn't give me those because sometimes he works through other people. He'll work through a man or he'll work through a woman to give you those instructions. And you need to have the ear to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying for the instructions for you so that your miracle, so that your door of miracles can be open and begin to flow, and your circumstances can be changed forever. Let's go to Mark. I want to do one more. I'm not going to go through all of the ministry of Jesus. I just want to hit, I wanted to hit one over the natural elements of the world, which was turning water into wine. We could have talked about Jesus walking on the water. We could have talked about Peter walking on the water. There's a whole bunch of things that we could have talked about in the ministry of Jesus on his journey to the cross. But I wanted to hit one about the natural things. I wanted to hit one about the physical things. And now we're going to hit one about spiritual things. Mark 5. If you could comment now, if you know how many demons was in the man that Jesus delivered in Mark 5. Because Jesus asked the question, what is your name? What was his name? Not how many, but what was his name? Let me read it. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran, meaning a man that was possessed. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. Again, he shouted at the top of his voice. I don't know about you, but to me, if he's, if, he's, if he's full of demons, he's probably got this demonic voice. I don't know if you've ever heard the sound of a demonic voice, but I have. And it's a weird sound. It'll make, it'll make your skin kind of crawl. It's a weird sound. And he shouted at the top of his voice, and this is what he said. What do you have? What do you want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? In God's name, don't torture me. For Jesus had said to him, Come out of this man, you impure spirit, or you evil spirit. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? And this is what he responded. My name is Legion, he replied, for we are Many, one man, many demons. One man, many demons. He was possessed by many demons and they were speaking through the man and Jesus said, what is your name? And they had to tell him the name. My name is Legion, he replied, for we are many. And they begged him and they begged Jesus again and again not to send them out of the area. A large herd of pigs was feeding on the nearby hillside. The demons begged Jesus, send us among the pigs, allow us to go into them. He gave them permission, and the impure or evil spirits came out and went into the pigs, and the herd of about 2,000 in number rushed down the steep bank into the lake, and they were drowned. There is a common thread between these three stories, between turning water into wine, the healing of ten lepers, and now the deliverance of the demonic man that had a lot of demons in which they called themselves legion. There's a common thread in these three. That common thread is everything, everybody recognized the authority that was over them. They recognized the authority that was over them. 
Jesus recognized and honored the authority of Mary being his mother. The ten lepers recognized that Jesus was the authority and they followed his instructions that as they went, then they were cleansed. These demons had recognized or they had to submit to the authority of Jesus and whenever he asked them a question, they had to answer and when he told them to go, they had to go. They were, they were in submission or sub, they're being submissive to the authority of Jesus. We live in a world that is filled with evil. When we got grown adults that is harming our children, we live in a world that's full of evil. We, as the children of God, have the authority over the demonic forces. It's just a matter of, are we plugged into that authority enough that when we speak to a demon, they have to answer us, and if we tell them to go, that they have to go? Because that's exactly what Jesus is teaching us here. This is a great teaching about deliverance ministry. If you've never been in deliverance ministry, you ought to go see it sometime, because you'll see some of the craziest things you never thought you would see in your life. Jesus, Jesus, all three times Mary said Jesus, the leper said Jesus, even the demon said Jesus. <laughs> the Bible tells us that they tremble when we say the name of Jesus. So right where you're at this morning, if you're suffering from an illness, if you've got financial hardship, if you've lost your job during this corona crisis that we have, you need to start saying the name of Jesus. And we need to understand that when we say the name of Jesus, we have the authority that is in the name of Jesus because he has left that authority here for us to use. Not just to say the name, but to use the authority that's in it. If I say the name of Jesus, demon, you got to leave, then that demon's got to leave. We got to recognize the authority. We got to use the authority that's in that name. Mary said Jesus. And then the servants followed his instructions. The ten lepers said Jesus. And the ten lepers followed his instructions. The demon said, Jesus. And then they had to follow his instructions because of the authority that he had. He didn't have that authority as God because he was down here as man. He used that authority as a man. And he was teaching us how we can use that authority as well. So this morning, if you're struggling... If you have a need, if you have an illness, if you have a family member that needs Jesus, we want to pray for you. Yeah, I don't have to be with you in person to pray for you because I know the Spirit can go to you right where you're at. I may be standing here and, 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 and preaching to you through a camera, but the Spirit of the living God is right in your house where you're watching this right now. So pray with me. Father... In the name of Jesus, let healings flow, God. And we learn from this that healings flow from our obedience, following the instructions that was given, and it opens the doors for the healings to flow in our life, God, for the miracles to happen that we need. God, help us to follow those instructions. May it, whether it's straight from you or whether it's through somebody else, may we be able to hear and to follow and walk in the obedience because Lord, every time when they went, when they acted on the instruction, it's when it was taking place, it's when the miracle happened. Lord, I thank you that miracles are happening right now. If you're watching this morning and you don't know Jesus, I want to introduce you to him. The best decision you'll ever make in your life. You know, I run for a long time, but it's the best decision I ever made in my life. I've never regretted accepting Jesus in my life. Life has not been easy, but it's the best decision you'll ever make. So if you don't know Jesus, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Father, 
I acknowledge that I need forgiveness. I acknowledge that my life is messed up and I don't know how to fix it. I need Jesus' help. Forgive me and I put my life in your hands. And I thank you that you're forgiving me right now in his name. Amen and amen. I love you. God bless you. Let's worship to this song. comment and let us know what you think about our worship this morning. Uh, many of you have been asking how can you continue to give since we're not physically coming together and I will explain the two ways that we have to be able to give in just a minute but I want to read you a story that I saw on people.com. There was a California man who had seriously injured in an automotive accident, had been on disability for years after his injuries permanently ended a career in carpentry. 
After running out of disability checks, the financial struggle went from bad to worse for his family, to the extent of having his children sent to live with, with their grandparents across the country in Illinois because he could not afford to support them anymore. Things were on a downward spiral until one day he recognized a Navajo blanket on an antique roadshow television program that was suspiciously similar to an old blanket that he had inherited from his grandmother who had since passed. After finding the blanket tucked away in an old dusty box, he had it appraised for a selling price and ultimately sold it at an auction for $1.5 million. Now he had this blanket in his possession the entire time. Through all the struggle, through all the fight to make ends meet, he was sitting on a gold mine, but he didn't recognize it. He did not tap into his blessing. Financial blessing from God is the same way. He has provided the route for us to take to be blessed in our finances. Look at Malachi 3.10. It says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive. God has provided the way for us to be blessed. He has all the means to do it and he wants to do it. And all we have to do is believe that we receive it and tap into the blessing. Don't keep your blessing locked up in a dusty box and, 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 and enclosed in a closet. Recognize it, by faith receive it, because it's God's plan for your life. Now here are the two ways that we have that you can give. The first way is by snail mail. You can uh, address your envelope to the Rescue Church. The address is 441 Old Charleston Road, Pillion, South Carolina, 29123. And the second way is that you can go online to give. Go to our website, and that address is www.therescuepillion.org. And when you get to the home page, you'll see a give button. You click the give button, and then a, another page will open, and it will say give now. If you'll click the give now button, then it will come up with a box. You put your amount in the box and how you want to give, whether it's credit card or what other means that's on there. And then once you do that, just finish following the instructions on the page, and you will be able to donate that way to the Rescue Church. Uh, we want to thank you for your contributions. May God bless you, and may your blessings be released by you giving to the Lord. We want to thank you for watching today. Please look at the Facebook page and keep up with the information. We'll be constantly updated with the information as it changes. God bless you. Have a great week, and we will see you next week at the same time, live Facebook, 11 a.m. next Sunday.